Hi, I'm Josh Benabou, and I'd like to tell you about our paper, Clearing Up the Strong CP Problem. This was work with Ensign Hook, Claudio Andrea Manzari, Hitoshi Moriyama, and Ben Safki. In our paper, we study the strong CP problem, which is the question of why the electric dipole moment of the neutron is so small. The QCD Lagrangian contains a term, theta bar gg dual, where theta bar can be thought of as an angle between minus pi and pi. G is the gluon field strength, and g dual its Hodge dual. This term for generic values of theta bar violates CP and induces an electric dipole moment for the neutron proportional to theta bar. Experiment constrains theta bar to be consistent with zero to one part in 10 billion. And this is the problem. Why is this a priori order, order one number theta bar apparently consistent with zero? In our paper, we respond to two claims concerning the strong CP problem. Firstly, claims made in the recent work of Kaplan, Melia, and Rajendran that there is a fundamental obstruction to so-called discrete symmetry solutions to strong CP. We also respond to claims by I, Garbrecht, and Tamarit that the strong CP problem would be illusory, meaning that for any value of theta bar, the neutron EDM would be zero. Let us recall the meaning of these discrete symmetry solutions. In these solutions, we impose, for example, P or CP symmetry in the UV, and that would set theta bar equal to zero. We then spontaneously break that symmetry to reproduce the observed violation of CP in the CKM matrix at low energies. Solutions of this type were proposed, for example, by Nelson, later by Barr, Babu, Mohapatra, and more recently by Hal, Manzari, and Nutter. In our paper, we discuss how theta enters in the path integral of QCD. In principle, there are two contributions that could be considered. One is the angle theta bar coming from the action. And we could also consider the parameter theta appearing uh, in the equation shown here, which is a free and otherwise undetermined parameter labeling the super selection sector of the theory. This parameter theta is commonly associated with the so-called theta vacua of the theory, but it may also be interpreted as the choice of a boundary condition for QCD. In our paper, we argue, as in the standard story, that in physical observables, theta and theta bar always appear in the combination theta plus theta bar. And so we can absorb theta into theta bar. On the other hand, the work of Kaplan, Melia, and Rajendran claims that if P or CP symmetry is imposed, <clears throat> this can in principle be used to remove theta bar from the Lagrangian, since that is a term which is odd under P or CP, but it cannot be used to remove theta. In our paper, we discuss why this interpretation is overly simplistic. And in order to do so, we identify three kinds of discrete symmetries. Number one, a classical discrete global symmetry, meaning a symmetry of the classical equations of motion. If P or CP are imposed and are of this kind, that does not solve the strong CP problem because theta bar g dual is a total derivative. We also consider the case number two of a quantum discrete global symmetry, meaning a non-anomalous symmetry of quantum correlation functions. If P or CP are imposed and are of this kind, that, as we argue, would set theta plus theta bar to either zero or pi. In order to discuss this case, we introduce a Z2-valued classical background field that is a function, loosely speaking, of space-time that implements orientation reversals. And a theory with, for example, a parity symmetry of the type number two should be well-defined in the presence of a non-trivial background uh, field. If theta, plus, theta plus theta bar is zero or pi, we may consider a third option, which is that of a gauge discrete symmetry, a local identification of configurations related by the symmetry action. In this case, the partition function, uh, as we argue, corresponds to a sum over all background fields modulo parity gauge transformations that correspond to continuous deformations of the parity uh, domain walls that we may insert. In string theory, it is well established that four-dimensional P or CP symmetry can arise as a discrete gauge symmetry. This is perhaps unsurprising since it is expected in any theory of quantum gravity that global symmetries are, uh, yeah. are violated. In our paper, we present a simple example where parity is realized as a continuous, uh, as an element of a continuous um, uh, gauge group of a higher dimensional theory. We present a simple example in five dimensions of a pure SU3 gauge field, gauge theory. 
with the space-time compactified on a circle. By combining a four-dimensional parity with a flip of the orientation of the extra dimension, we obtain nothing but a rotation of the 5D Lorentz group, which is gauged by gravity. In our paper, we explain how a generalization of this trick uh, applies in more complicated constructions in string theory. In the second part of our paper, we respond to claims that a subtlety in the order of limits in the partition function of QCD would set the electric dipole moments uh, of the neutron to zero. We argue that this is incorrect for uh, basic reasons, for example, arguments in chiral perturbation theory and based on the so-called witten veneziano relation between the mass of the eta prime meson and the topological susceptibility of pure Young mills. Lastly, in our paper, we also discuss one plus one dimensional QED, which is a fully solvable QFT with a theta term that allows us, for example, to discuss the interpretation of theta as both a boundary condition and as a Lagrangian parameter in this theory, and also allows us to show that theta can emerge from an extra dimensional UV completion in analogy with the aharonov bohm effect. In our paper, we also highlight that this theory uh, exhibits a strong CP problem and that gauging parity solves that problem. In summary, in our paper, we established that indeed the strong CP problem is a problem and that models based on spontaneously broken gauged P or CP can in principle solve this problem. Further, we conjecture that in a theory of quantum gravity, the IR value of, physically, of the physically observable combination of theta angles is calculable from the UV theory. As all BSM models should be embedded in quantum gravity, this leads us to question whether the entire discussion of global P and CP symmetries in the work of Kaplan, Melia, and Rajendran is not in a swampland. Thank you for listening, and we hope that you'll check out the paper.